We are here talking with Ramey Campbell about his exhibition at the Art Center in Orange, Sea Summit Sky, and his work in landscapes and painting in general. So how about you tell us a little bit about what got you started? What got you into art and interested in painting in particular? Well, I, I think as a child, you know, um, like most kids, they like to draw, they like to get, you got crayons, you, you, you're given uh, paint by numbers, and you know, you kind of get into it that way. I was fortunate that I lived in Alexandria. And so um, the school system, when it would, when it would have a field trip, probably 75% of the time, they would go to the National Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, later, after that experience, um, I, I started copying paintings. Um, and that you know, gave me a, 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 a chance to, to um, experience the, the brush and, and the nature of, of, of paints and, and so forth. Then I went away to college uh, to study pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And so when I when I got out, I just needed I just needed something to to fill that void of studying all the time. So uh, I started I started painting, um, and one thing led to another. I started taking classes, uh, workshops. Um, I, I took a couple of classes, art classes at at at, uh, at Piedmont, and then l later uh, I was I was fortunate enough to. Um, to go to Beverly Street Studio School in Stanton. Mm -hmm. and, and I studied with Ron Beamer for six years. Are there artists that really inspired you along the way, other than your teachers, uh, who clearly got you going Absolutely. <laughs> on this path? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely it was the French Impressionists. That was, that was the first. Um, and, and, and in particular, it was Monet, Pissarro, and Sicily. Of course, there's a lot of other French Impressionists, but those three, I don't know, I just thought they were just great landscape painters. Um, and I, I, I started uh, copying, copying all those paintings. My wife doesn't, doesn't like to go with me to an art museum because I could, I could be in front of a painting for an hour and a half, you know, with a pencil of paper, mm -hmm. trying to understand how, how it was put together. So in a way, you never stop studying. Oh, how painters paint. No, I think as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, you continue to grow. There is no, there's no, there's no end to it. You know, you're, you'll, I think you'll always be a student. To be able to create, it feels really good when it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feels really lousy when it doesn't work. When I'm painting well, boy, it makes me feel really good for the whole day. Mm -hmm. But if I have a lousy day of painting, I feel pretty lousy the whole day. I mean, I can't wait to get back to the painting to understand what it is about the painting that's not working. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for somebody who's trying to do this in their work, no matter what level they might be at? <clears throat> I think you just have to stick with it, you know, and, and you're not going to have a great painting every time. Mm -hmm. Put the painting away. When you finish with it, um, put it away. Don't look at it for, for several months mm -hmm. and then look at it again. And then you, you look at it with fresh eyes. If it's not working, try to understand and figure it out what is it about the painting that's not working. Mm -hmm. That's almost as much uh, educational value as getting it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Obviously the past two years have been very disruptful for all kinds of things, but also artists in their practices in their studios. Can you speak a little bit about how COVID-19 and all of this disruption in the world has changed or not changed your artistic practice? Well, it really hasn't changed my practice mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Because art, for the making of art, for me, mm -hmm. is, is solitary. So that I'm by myself anyway really hasn't changed mm -hmm. at, at, at all. Um, every, everyone in my art group uh, we're all we're all vaccinated and boosted, mm -hmm. so we feel free in being mm -hmm. around each other. So I think it's important that you have a group that you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, could you speak a little bit more about why landscapes in particular draw you? Uh, my professional career as a, as a hospital pharmacist, uh, I would work 12 hours a day, so it takes me an hour to get there and an hour to get back. So it's at least 14 hours during the day where I'm consumed in, in my work. And, and I'm in the bottom of the, uh, the basement of the hospital. There are no windows. Um, and so when I'm not working, I really need to be outside. 
And so um, art was the perfect thing, was a perfect match to, to my professional career. I started off as a, as a strictly as a plain air painter. Doing that, you said you were a plain air painter. How has that changed? When I, when I took lessons uh, at Beverly Street Studio School, during the war months, we would always paint in plain air. Mm -hmm. But then during the cold winter, we would paint in studio. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I, 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 I really liked it better. Um, it uh, certainly it was, it was warmer. I didn't have to fight flies and insects and, mm -hmm. and, and the heat. <laughs> and so as, as time goes on, I'm using the exactly the same technique as a plain air painter in studio. Mm -hmm. It, it, it hasn't, hasn't changed my, my, my method at all. I mean, I, I, I still have to be outside. I still have to find the motif mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I, I photograph it in, in multiple ways. Um, uh, many times I will take uh, written notes um, and I try to break down the scene as I would interpret it in pigment. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a planar painter, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm painting what I'm seeing, but I'm also painting what I'm feeling also. Right. So I thought, if, well, if I can do that in plain air, I can certainly do the same thing in the studio. Mm -hmm. And the idea has, is perishable. Mm -hmm. So if I don't, whatever I saw in that, in that picture is gone. So my goal as, as a painter is try to describe in that painting what I'm seeing and what, what I'm feeling to the, to the viewer. Mm -hmm. you, I can drive 120 miles west and be in the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains. I could go drive 120 miles uh, east and go to the Potomac, Potomac River and the Chesapeake Bay. So, and I paint everything in between. Um, that kind of makes me think about the Corolla Dune series. That you have really taken a different approach to the way that you capture that scene and the atmosphere of it very effectively. So if you could speak a little bit more about that series and why you keep painting that scene. Certainly. For those of you who are familiar with Monet, he did a lot of series of paintings. Uh, and I've been doing that mm -hmm. for about 30 years. With regards to the um, uh, dunes in Corolla, that's where I go on vacation. And this one particular um, cottage that, that we have every year, uh, when I look out the balcony, that's, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. And I see it multiple times during the day. Mm -hmm. Different atmospheric conditions, they're all totally different. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess it was probably a challenge for myself. If you could talk a little bit about how you treat light in your work. And it's just r really um, a challenge mm -hmm. to myself. I believe it's very difficult to get that atmospheric quality mm -hmm. into a painting, and I continue to work at it mm -hmm. until I, and, and, until I achieve it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but when it does, it's, it feels good. Mm -hmm.